how exciting GIMP 3.0 is finally released. I have it installed in the background and I've been using it a little bit now. As a stable version is here, at long last, the first release of GIMP 3.0 is here. And I'm excited because the end result, after around seven years of hard work, it does have some really neat features that I think you're gonna really enjoy. Definitely stuff that users have been asking for a very long time now have all been published with this latest release. We're gonna get into some of those features and we're gonna use GIMP 3.0, but let's talk about some of the release notes first so we can get an idea of what's all new. The new intro splash screen looks beautiful. And I'll mention at least for me on my computers, this splash screen loads around two times faster now for me, which is fantastic. One of the biggest pain points, at least for me, when using GIMP was the fact that it just loaded forever on the splash screen. You could tell that it was loading all sorts of utilities and tools at the bottom of the splash screen, but it would just take forever. I do like the fact that I can launch it much quicker, making it something that I wanna use a little bit more often. And some of the biggest highlights here, which we're gonna try and hit some of these in actual GIMP 3.0. The first one here is need to tweak a filter you applied hours ago, new GIMP 3.0 is has non-destructive editing for most commonly used filters. See the changes in real time with on canvas preview. Exchange files with more applications, including BC7 DDS files, as well as better PSD export and many new formats. That's right, we get better Photoshop exporting, which is fantastic. Don't know how big to make your drawing. Simply set your paint tool to expand layers automatically as needed. Making pro quality text got easier too. Style your text, apply outlines, shadows, bevels. You can still edit your text, change font size, and even tweak the style settings. Organizing your layers has become much easier with the ability to select multiple items at once. I definitely want to show this and transform them together. I'm super excited about this one because it was completely frustrating in the last Grump versions. Anyways, color management was also improved again as our long-term project to make GIMP an advanced image editor for all usages. Of course, an updated graphical GTK3 for modern desktop usage. And finally, a new Wilbur logo. A more modern logo has been introduced and is featured. It's a little goofy that they don't have a high resolution one here on their website. Is what it is. Let's get into using GIMP 3.0. So here's GIMP 3.0. And one thing I'd never like about GIMP is the fact that the icons are just too small for me. So I always go to edit and then I go to preferences. In the preferences, I find interface and change these so that they're much larger. With that and changing up the scaling, that usually helps me. Although I do sacrifice on a little bit of the sharpness of things like text. I wish they improved that, but it is what it is. I have a logo opened up. And the first thing I wanna show you is to do with layers. Selecting multiple layers makes things so much easier to move around. So for example, if I click on layer one and go through to layer three, that has savvy selected, my background selected, the circle, but it doesn't have the vias or the parts of the circuit selected. That's right, this is my old logo. And I did design it in GIMP originally. So it's fun to use this again. And let's move things around. As you can tell, I can move these completely together. And I selected the wrong text layer, but that's fine. I'll move that up as well, just so you can see Savvy being moved. So anyways, if I go select these three again and I move them down to the bottom, you'll notice that the V is all come back in and they're not covered by the background layer. But this is a fantastic thing that we can do now. It is a little annoying to try to move it up to the top as you can tell, it keeps getting stuck over here. Not a big deal, but I do think that could be improved a little bit just for more stability and moving things around. Anyways, this is one of the massive features that have gotten added into GIMP 3.0. I do like that. The UI has been overhauled a little bit. Well, you can't tell, but the engine under the hood has completely changed. It's using GTK 3 now in order to build the UI instead of GTK 2. Users have been asking why not GTK4 as that's out already. Well, they already started development with GTK3. And since it, things started seven years ago, well, there wasn't much time to change things in the mid. On the next portion, the text tool has been improved as well. We can now see, well, the box looks a bit different. We have our options here on the left-hand side or still in the canvas as well. And the main thing is advanced styling options such as outline shadows and bevels got updated. So we're just gonna write something out, maybe testing here. I'm gonna move this a little bit, whoop, wrong one. Now to play around a little bit with the effects so we can test one of the best tools that have gotten added. I'm gonna add a drop shadow in filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. 
And I'm just gonna add it to this text here so we can see a little bit of that drop shadow getting added in the background. Maybe we'll decrease the opacity so we can see that drop shadow a little better. We'll move it closer towards the text and forget the blur radius. We're gonna make it fairly obvious that it's showing up in the background right there. Looks about right. We also have radius as well. So we're gonna make that a lot larger here so that it really shows up. So fantastic. That's one effect. And if we go over to the layer effects, we can now notice that there's the drop shadow effect. And what's really cool here is that you can now tweak a filter after you've already applied it earlier without losing your changes. You can see in this preview, we can double click the drop shadow and then edit the filter again. So if we didn't like something about the filter here, in effect, we can edit that effect. Notice I just edited the drop shadow, made it a little more intense, fantastic. We can also add more filters on top of this in order to make things a little easier. For example, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur. You can tell that the text is now blurred. We can make it really bad or Let's just do somewhere in between, a little bit blur, add that in. And before you could not go back and make changes to this. Now I can, for example, I can again, click on the layer effects. And for this specific layer, I have these two effects in. So I can also move around which layer effect first shows up. For example, if I did the drop shadow, then the Gaussian blur, you can tell that it's much different than doing the Gaussian blur than the drop shadow. We can of course also remove a filter if we don't like it or just hide it so we can test as well. Everything just happens instantaneously on the canvas. That's been working great. And this non-destructive editing is an absolutely fantastic new addition. Now you don't have to worry about adding multiple filters and layer effects. You can make edits to them. It's one of the best things that have come with GIMP 3.0. I encourage you to try it out. My two favorite things I've shown you already and if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button for me as we get into more things. Also think about subscribing below. You wouldn't want to miss another video. YouTube can get finicky, so don't miss out. Overall, being able to edit these effects just makes GIMP 3.0 even better for more advanced styling options, such as adding extra effects like outline, shadows, bevels, all that fun stuff. It's so much more flexible now that the system is not destructive. Another thing I really like is the fact that you can now select multiple layers easily and do transforms for example if i did a 3d transform on this whole entire thing i have four layers suggested so we should see testing testing the background and savvy all get transformed together and down here it says i'd have a selected layer not visible it's layer two kind of forgot about that there we go i think it's a little goofy how this is all displayed but it still works i'm going to move everything together and see how that gets applied in the transform wow definitely goofy but you can tell that things are fantastic as they can get transformed together very easily, easy selection. This used to be a lot harder in the previous version of GIMP. And with 3.0, using the multi-layer selection and transformation tools make it so much easier to transform them together. This will drastically improve efficiency when working with complex composition. I really like the fact that they've done this as well. Now, in order for this not to be so trippy anymore, I'm just gonna control Z a few times and get back to where we were. I do think it's still lacking in a modern feel and even interface, but the responsiveness is a little better. It doesn't feel as clunky here in 3.0 with GTK3. I do like the fact that they've updated to the GTK3 based interface. Again, it feels more responsive because of that. So I'm gonna get into another new feature. So I'm going to create a new image size. This is 800 by 800 pixels. And you noticed in this one, I could not expand outside the bounds of the canvas. So what I'll do next is I'll create a new layer. The new layer is going to be somewhat smaller than the canvas. So I have this 400 by 400 layer. I'm just gonna keep it in the corner and then I'm going to select the paint tool. For example, I'm gonna select some sort of a pattern. And what you'll notice by default, if you try to hit the edges of this layer, you will not go into the background layer where the canvas shows up, but now we have the option to set this. As a new feature has gotten added in, it's called expand layer. So if you go into your tools for whatever paint tool you have selected, whether it's a pencil, paintbrush, airbrush, so on and so forth, you can go down and select expand layers, which gives you some options. It says, how much do you want to expand by? This is set to 100 pixels by default. What type of expansion you want? You want the foreground color, background color, so on and so forth. Transparency is the one I'm sticking with. And then fill layer to mask with white or black, all good there. And now watch what happens when I try to go beyond the bounds 
of my layer. Boom. It expands that layer by 100 pixels in whatever direction I'm going in. So that's a great feature. If you don't know how big your layer really needs to be and you're experimenting, you can now set this setting to expand layers by default. It's a fantastic tool. No need to expand the layers manually and create artificial boundaries. Instead, make your canvas large, create smaller layers, and then you can really shrink in things if need be with resizing the canvas size or just fitting the canvas to the layers at the very end of your design. I love this new addition as well. The advanced color management has also been improved, especially if you're working with professional grade color accuracy in GIMP 3.0. I personally don't, so I'm not able to really show you that, but it is a highlight. Another big deal is we now have more file types that we can export as, and there's a lot to go through here as we've received even better Photoshop image exporting as it's been refined to ensure better compatibility. Improvement facilitates a smoother workflow between GIMP and Photoshop. It's got more accurate preservation of layers, effects, and other image attributes. Same thing for BC7 and DDS textures. GIMP 3.0 has added support for exporting textures using the BC7 compression within DDS, the direct draw surface files. So here's your DDS image. BC7 is a high quality compression, making it ideal for detailed textures and applications like game development. So game developers will really enjoy this. Previously, users had to rely on third-party solutions to manage these BC7 textures. With GIMP 3.0, this functionality is built in. One thing I am disappointed about is the fact that they really have not updated their shape tools, including things like circles and rectangles. It still lacks a simple and intuitive way to, to draw basic shapes. At least I haven't figured out a good way to do so. There also has been improved tablet and Wayland support. The tablet input is much better and GIMP 3.0 has native Wayland support. Well, those are some of the exciting developments in GIMP 3.0. Let me know what you're enjoying in the comments section below. What improvements have they made that you're super excited to use? There's a lot to cover, so I didn't get to everything. I'd love to hear what the most exciting development for you is. There's definitely been some awesome tools that are going to get me to use GIMP a little bit more just because it's easier to use. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. Also, subscribe below. You're a true fan. You made it to the end of the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.